Welcome to People Tech, the podcast of the HCM Technology Report. I'm Mark Pfeffer. My guest today is John Mark Antonio, Senior Director of Evangelism and Federated Development at Lithion by ADP. Our subject is low code development. What is it? What it means for HR tech, and what it could mean for HR professionals. All on this edition of People Tech, brought to you by Criteria. Finding and retaining great talent is a challenge. Fortunately, Criteria can help. Their assessments let you make better talent decisions by identifying high potential candidates. And they help you predict job performance by evaluating the skills and abilities that lead to success. Learn more at www.criteriacorp.com. We're also sponsored by Indeed. You're the hiring expert for your company, and you need a hiring partner who can make your life easier. You need Indeed. Get started right now with a free $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post. Visit Indeed.com slash HCM. That's Indeed.com slash HCM. And now, John Mark Antonio, welcome. So let, let me start with the obvious question, which is, what is low-code? What is low-code development? Sure. So um, I think low-code development is, you know, a means of software engineering where we're trying to remove the, I guess, the the typing or the line-by-line means of creating you know, applications or related business logic, really with a high level of abstraction. I think you may hear low-code oftentimes used with, um, you know, visual development is, you know, often, often thrown in there. But the whole idea of how do you add another layer of abstraction, make it a little easier to realize whatever that business logic or that application logic is meant to be, right? It's um, just a different way of thinking about it, but it's still, in my mind, very much application development, just with a different set of tools. Can you give me an example? How, how does low code work versus regular code? Sure. So I think um, I think more of, say, regular traditional code, you think of, um, you know, an IDE with just typing lines by line by line of logic, just kind of typing away. I, I go back to the old... Um, green and black kind of, you know, monitors, if you will, just pounding out um, lines of code in a compiler. Um, low code, again, going back to that kind of visual, you may hear drag and drop analogy used a lot, but it's a means of representing the logic in a way that can be just plugged and pulled together. Think of um, application logic or UI elements that could just be moved along a screen to create strings of, let's say, application flows. Um, one good example, if you think of a business process, for example, instead of lines of code or writing down ideas, imagine being able to just say, here's different elements that represent parts of a business logic or business process. How do I, how can I put them on a canvas or some element that, and string it together to represent what I want to do in kind of in in that higher level abstract. Two years ago, you didn't really hear very much about low code if you heard anything. And now a lot of people are talking about it. So in terms of HR technology in particular, where is it? In other words, what impact is it having? How is it factoring to say ADP's roadmaps? Yeah. What, what's happening uh, with it in HR tech? It's a, it's a great question. I think I'll tackle that for a few ways. I think the, the idea of almost low code development is it's actually been around for a while. I think I'm going to put my old academic head on. I think you used to refer to it as like fourth generation development environments, if you will, that this idea of, again, this further abstraction, right? And I think it's actually an evolution of the development process. We think Way back when, not to date myself, right? You had old, I, I, I missed the punch card generation, but old compilers and assembly language led to higher level languages and higher level languages. And with the whole goal of, right, how do you increase abstraction to increase efficiency and, you know, developer throughput in a lot of ways, right? That, that model, that evolution, if you will, has continued for quite a while. Um, I think low code is a bit of a, it's a bit of a punctuated jump, right? I think a lot of that evolution and more traditional development environment was the help of, tools and libraries and how do we make it easier to build for Mac OS or Windows, et cetera. Um, I think one of the challenges of low code, right, is how do you not only represent um, visually what's happening, but even having the technology to make that drag and drop and kind of that abstraction tie together cleanly. I think it took a little time to really figure out, have the horsepower from a technical perspective, as well as, you know, the the means of what it's trying to achieve, right? I think um, to the second point more on the HR side, I think it's it's an interesting place, right? I think that I think one there is an increased need for it on the HR side. And what I mean by need is I think the 
the use cases of the complexity around HR have increased to the point where having tools like this are more important or even more necessary. Right? I think of like even a lot of the other other operational functions in a company, right? Like over the, over the years, like the what they've taken on and what they're trying to achieve have gotten more complex. Organizations become more complex. The way they manage are more complex. So having the proper information technology systems to support that, I think, is, is I wouldn't say trailed a bit, but I think that it hasn't quite kept up as it was other domains. If we think of um, like finance functions or data and analytics groups, you pull teams and technology stacks purposely built around that. I think HR had done that, but in a very minimal sense. And I think going back to the low code sense of that or idea behind it, I think having a means to more efficiently create those applications, but you're right, kind of blur the lines on well, what's a technologist building a custom application versus what's more of an called HR IT role that's maybe creating applications or business processes that are unique to given companies. Um, I think the need has become more there. The need to move quicker is there. I think the past year and a half during the COVID crisis has proven that, right? The idea of I need to turn this around quickly, but I don't want to go hire a bunch of people to go hand roll some custom app or go figure out how to build on top of a complicated stack. As you, I think, push the envelope of where these, I guess, more efficient or um, more easy to digest uh, development tools have come into play. So, um, so I think it's it's a lot of different pieces that have become together. Part of the ecosystem, part of it's the need or complexity of the, the HR processes and kind of the IT function within it. Part of it's the maturity of people's familiarity with what low code can mean, right? People get more comfortable with it and how it's deployed. So I think there's no silver bullet kind of rationale, but I think a lot of these, a lot of these um, influences have started converging and coming together to push the industry in that direction. I think a lot of people hear low code and they think citizen developer that in the HR context, the HR practitioner would sit down and put together an application to handle something. Is that the reality or is that even where it's going or is this still just a more efficient way of coding for technology professionals? I think it's somewhere in the middle, right? right? I don't feel that in the very near term, every HR professional is gonna become a low code developer modifying every part of the system, right? I think there's still, I think it's more of a special use case, um, but I think the line is moving a bit, right? I, I, I envision kind of a world where you have more technically minded or almost HR IT professionals, if you will, filling this gap between more traditional development and what low code tools can help them enable. Again, to meet some of those new needs or customizations that are coming out of the business requirements and how quickly they need to move. Um, and again, if thinking corollaries to other functions, I think if we think of marketing roles, biz ops, data, data groups, right? There's, um, you do have some little developers, but there's kind of that almost specialized tech role that's feeding those tools and those parts of the businesses. I almost envision HR following suit, right? We almost have these more um, technical business analysts, IT focused individuals who can take those tools and kind of use them to support the business, but not necessarily everyone again, in the immediate term, jumping in and just saying, oh, I want to build the latest application. That'd be great. I'd love to see everyone jump in there. But I think there's a, a more pragmatic view that HR professional is still there to achieve a function for a company, help support the people operations of a group. And that's where their focus is to the degree that the tools or the call it an HRIT group or, or some other technically minded staff can support that. I think that's really the, the real value that they'd achieve. Um, and taking it one step further, I almost think it, it opens up the minds of HR professionals to say, what could they do, right? How can they better support their operations, particularly as we get more, I, I don't want to say unique companies, but um, different ways of operating, you know, increased complexity around multinationals, about different ways of running people management, talent ops, like the, like a, how as, as companies are exploring different ways to manage and keep their, their employees in a good place. And then you have this increased need for different ways of achieving that. And this tool, this kind of low code and HR related um, Function just gives it more gives teams more flexibility to achieve that without massive overhead, right? Massive IT investment or hand rolled processes, et cetera. Does the increase in, in use of low code present HR with any particular opportunities that they didn't have before? And you know, what might those be? It's a great question. Um, I think it definitely opens up again new ways of achieving what they want, right? I think I would love to see a world where rather than Kind of being pigeonholed into here's what tools can enable you to do if not you're stuck with spreadsheets and sticky notes right i think to kind of bridge that gap right if there's certain processes one employer maybe associate outreach or ways they want to interact with their groups or again handle talent management processes or getting feedback etc i think it gives them more creativity to figure out what works best for them and allowing the tools to more efficiently achieve that rather than the other way around they're being told okay here's the process you're going to follow it 
um, it, it flips the tables a little bit, right? And I think it's going to be a bit of a change for individuals to have that kind of freedom, right? And in a lot of ways, it could be overwhelming, I'm sure, right? Instead of saying, or rather, there's a certain degree of comfort, I think, being told, well, here's how this tool works, and here's what you can do, check box A, B, C, and go about your business, right? I think here, you know, if you could do things, what would you do? And at least a lot of questions and maybe different ways of trying new things or maybe experimenting even with how HR groups run their operations or their teams. Um, this can present a lot of that, which again, leads to different ways of um, just thinking about the business or thinking about interacting with their, their associate community. Last question. You've mentioned <laughs> use cases, different use cases several times. Mm -hmm. Can you give me an example of a use case where low code matters, where HR pay people might have it come into their minds? Oh, great. Um, you know, I think I'm going back to the, the current climate. I think the whole um, remote work and even going back to work dynamic has been one that you know, I don't think many of us have encountered prior, right? Is it definitely, it's, it's um, hopefully a once in a lifetime experience, but from an HR professional, right? How do you, how do you handle that outreach? Maybe how do you, you know, ensure that people know what to do? Do they have the right information? If people are going to the office or not, Okay, do they have to check in? How do you monitor it? How do you see what people want to do or where they want to go? Um, I think it's an example of, you know, ways where HR professionals have to think a little differently. Again, it's something they haven't encountered. They likely had to move quickly because the environment was changing so much. And I don't think there are a lot of tools out there today that could easily handle that, let's say, out of the box, right? And then thinking about that in a low code way, it'd be great to say, oh, we want to capture these data points. We want to, you know, get the message out or provide, you know, some easy way for associates to find this information, um, see who's monitoring, for example, great. Here's the requirements. Let's figure out how to spin it and build it and get it out, done. Um, again, I think in more quote, quote unquote traditional ways, you could do that, right? I can have someone build a custom stack, a web app, whatever it is, but a little more time, maybe a little more back and forth, a little more complexity could come along with that. and may not even integrate as cleanly with the existing systems as you do today in a more HR minded kind of platform plus development environment. John, thank you. Of course, no, happy to. I've been talking with John Mark Antonio, Senior Director of Evangelism and Federated Development at Lithion by ADP. And this has been People Tech, the podcast of the HCM Technology Report. We're a publication of Recruiting Daily. This edition's been brought to you by Criteria. Their scientifically validated assessments help you make better talent decisions by identifying high potential candidates. The result, increased revenue, reduced turnover, and better quality of hire. Visit criteriacorp.com to see how Criteria can help you unlock the potential in your candidate pool. That's www.criteriacorp.com. We're also brought to you by Indeed. With tools like Indeed Instant Match, giving you quality candidates whose resumes on Indeed fit your job description immediately, and Indeed skills tests, which on average reduce hiring time by 27%. Give them a try. Get a $75 credit at Indeed.com slash HCM. That's Indeed.com slash HCM. The offer is valid through June 30th. The terms and conditions apply. People Tech is a part of Evergreen Podcasts. To see all of their programs, visit www.evergreenpodcasts.com. And to keep up with HR technology, visit the HCM Technology Report every day. We're the most trusted source of news in the HR tech industry. Find us at www.hcmtechnologyreport.com. I'm Mark Pfeffer. Do you love news about LinkedIn, Indeed, Google, and just about every other recruitment tech company out there? Hell yeah. I'm Chad. I'm Cheese. We're the Chad and Cheese Podcast. All the latest recruiting news and insights are on our show. Dripping in snark and attitude. Subscribe today wherever you listen to your podcasts. We, we out. Faith in the news media has been challenged, making it even harder to get stories told. The Friday Reporter Podcast was created to help audiences better understand the media by hosting journalists who will answer the questions to which we need answers. Join me every Friday to hear more.